Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to American Truck Simulator. I'm Martin Wenzel. We're in Mobile, Alabama. It is Wednesday, week 36. I believe it's week 36. Today is May 2nd when I'm recording this, but it'll be April 22nd for the video. And just dropped off a load about an hour ago. Dropped off the load, unhooked, and been waiting to get dispatched. And now we have a thing to pick up. We're gonna be picking up some ethane just down the road from Shell. And this is kind of a little bit of a different episode though, where I left off uh, playing last time I played ATS. Um, the day was kind of strange. I'll throw up the log for that day, but I was able to get going again at 11 p.m. Uh, mountain time, which was midnight here, central time, but still considered the day before the 21st. So, we've actually been working since 11. It is now 3 uh, on our log. Again, we are our log is based on mountain time. But we've been up, well, we'll, we'll talk in central time since that's our clock, so we've been up since midnight. But the, that hour from counts, that first hour counts actually for yesterday. And this, uh, now we have been working for three hours today. So we can still drive, you know, it gets a little, you gotta do the math and everything, but our 14 hour clock started at midnight. So we can drive until two central time. Or we can work until two central time. Our drive clock we can we can drive 11 hours a day but we won't it gets all a little weird there uh, what gear do I want me in there we are so we're mobile we're gonna be going out over to probably Chevron but we'll be picking up a shell tanker Still doing some freight market stuff just to get something different uh, to haul some different stuff than our regular trailer. A little bit slower making money though. Well, that's okay. Here, Texaco, not Chevron, Texaco. Freight market, we don't have our own trailer right now. So we can either take this ethane or this gasoline back to Nogales. I want to just take some short jobs. This is actually the best paying job on the market in Mobile, besides taking a large scraper up to Kansas. Let's see if we can change this. I think this is just a shorter one, maybe a longer one. We'll just go with that, with what I already had. And we'll take that job. We'll be able to drop this off and pick up another job probably as well no problem again we have until 2 p.m. to drive and work We've already driven be about now three hours of driving so we have eight hours more to drive on our 11 and there's the trailer all right swing over here careful not to hit these guys be a blind side back. Actually, I could have swung it a little bit more and made it driver's side, but we'll stick with this. I think I'm okay. Let's stop. Let's, let's look around. Yep, we're good. Don't want to make any dumb mistakes. You can see the trailer right there. I think we're pretty good lined up.
just missed it. Or maybe we're not far enough. Let's see. Let's go a little bit further. Legs down, or like put the legs up. Get back in the truck. It's 4:15, and we're just gonna get on the road right away. We have four hours, 35 minutes. Actually, we should do our little test there. We just tested to see if we can tug it. We're all hooked up good. Let's check the brake lights. The lines are all good there. Blinkers. Uh, four ways. We got flammable gas. We're, we're uh, hazardous load. All our lines are hooked up there with our glad hands. Now we can get going. Sometimes don't think about making sure I did everything right, hooking up the trailer because I've been so used to just hauling around the same trailer. Don't want to drive away and get completely out of the area and then realize, oh, no, didn't bring the trailer with you. Luckily, you can't screw up too bad in American Truck Simulator. You can't put the legs up, pull away, the trailer then smacks down into the ground because you weren't actually hooked can't do that in this simulation. Just have to hit that T button and you're hooked up and ready to go. So are we heading up? I think it's the uh, 65 back to Tuscaloosa. This is going to be a early morning drive. We're going to get the sunrise as we get to our destination. Basically going the same way I just came down to get to Mobile. I head right back up. But this is a pretty good area of coast to coast, uh, pretty well done. A lot more stuff going on. At some point I do want to get to the northeast, but there's just not a lot up there, I'm sure. Uh, they very much are focusing on Texas, the people they got working on it right now, Texas and the southeast. And that's probably one of our biggest videos on this channel and in this series is when we've been driving here in the deep south. I still get comments on those videos and people, that's that's kind of like their entry point into uh, my channel. It's, it's really cool. I know some people have been asking to see, I think Kansas. Kansas is pretty decent. It's got a little bit more to it. Not completely empty. Keep letting me know what you want to see. Uh, the last couple episodes, or at least the one where we were at our garage, I was trying to give you guys a look at the Arizona Improvement Project. Uh, that's supposed to be going into it, another update pretty soon. Should have been the end of April, but nothing so far. Hoping that gets uh, finished so we can actually use the Interstate 10, the big interchange there with the US 60 and all that. Uh, there's another project I saw just uh, looking at the SES forums today. Uh, some rebuilds of the El Centro area between, you know, the area between 
Interstate 8 and Interstate 10, California 111, and then I think uh, adding in the California 78 or 87, one of those. You know, so our last episode, or a couple episodes ago, we were in El Centro, and it really isn't that accurate to what's going on in that area. And so maybe this new ma that new map update will be something to look at, something to look forward to. A lot more maps getting made. Another one I saw was a two, a ratio two fifths, or two, what would it be? You know, this is a one twentieth scale map. This is a uh, that would be a two fifth scale map or something? Of and the guy's I think he's from Serbia or something. He's working on doing San Diego and Los Angeles in two fifth scale, which is a huge map. But you're gonna get a lot of detail with those city roads. Um, another guy I know is doing a some county in California, one-to-one -one scale. So there's all kinds of different maps out there. Uh, obviously, for this series, the ones we're interested in are anything to add to our 120th scale overall American map. So it's already 5:20 in the morning, and we're starting to get our sunrise. Got some nice uh, little greenhouse greenhouses over there. I always like seeing how the sunrises look in these games. i um, been doing a lot of flying lately in X-Plane. Uh, working on a project where I'm uh, flying around the world. And not just flying around the world, but flying... The, the project is actually flying to every country. Uh, I use Project Fly to keep track of my flights and all that stuff and all the little details and you get to see where you fly. And they have a little passport program on there where every time you visit a new country you get that flag into your passport. And I, I've i started in New Zealand because I have the New Zealand ortho photos or real satellite shots of New Zealand so it looks like you're actually flying over real New Zealand. So I started there and I'm going to be flying to every country I can get to using a, a Boeing 730 Seven eight hundred, because that's the plane I know how to fly, and one of the few planes I do have for X plane, my commercial airliners. So I'm going to be hopefully posting some videos of that. Uh, it won't be gameplay videos, but it'll just be kind of a slideshow video of photos from each flight and maps and information about what's going on. Uh, I can't do videos, just my computer cannot handle X-Plane and uh, OBS recording the gameplay. Not at this time. Maybe in the future, get a beefier computer to do that. It already struggles a little bit with doing American Truck Simulator. Beautiful sunrise here. Going under the power lines. But yeah, it, you know, the sunrises, wherever you get the sunrises in X-Plane and the sunsets in X-Plane, you get the same thing in here. Just beautiful, beautiful approximation of what we see in real life. And sometimes a lot of us don't see because we're sleeping in or we're in our office or wherever we're at and not able to actually see these beautiful scenery. And that's a cool thing that truck drivers and pilots get to see on a daily basis. Alright, let's make sure we're going the right way. I think we got to move over, actually. Continue north. Here in Birmingham. Actually, I could have just stayed in that left lane. Now I've lost my momentum. Get around this night transport, night transportation curtain side. That just reminds me of something I saw on the trucking forums or somewhere where, you know, every every company, every company, every truck company has its people that praise praise it and people that think it's a joke and it's a you know, horrible place. And I saw one about night where the guy was just saying it was this horrible, horrible place. 
I've seen other things that, you know, people have said night's a great place to go and work, so. I'm sure. I think it's a bigger thing in trucking because it's so much. You're so much more exposed. Or it's so much more of a. A tighter group, I think, of a profession. Uh, where. You know, unlike other. You know, other job searching. When you're searching for a job, just any old job in an office or a, you know, fast food or whatever. Those job, there's not a, a base of people that you can kind of go out and say, hey, what about this place? What about that place? Whereas trucking, truckers tend to be in trucking for years and they go between companies and it's always trucking. Whereas lots of people, they, you know, they go from. You know, maybe you're working at Walmart, and then you work at McDonald's, and then you work at, you know, or you work at a, whatever it is, if you're not in a, you know, a specific career, whereas trucking is a specific career, so they're going to have those, a little bit more of a, a base of people complaining and bitching about, you know, bad companies and people praising good companies. And you really got to sift through a lot of that when you're looking for uh, trucking jobs and looking for... A place to start if you're going into trucking. I think the big thing is to always realize every company's got its downs. Every company has its good parts. Every company has is going to have some shady, you know, parts that are just not, you know, perfect. Nothing is perfect. There's no perfect company out there. But there's been some um, interesting developments in the trucking world where I think it's Arkansas or Alabama where a judge ruled that uh, truck companies have to pay their drivers minimum wage, at least minimum wage, for every hour they're out not at home. That for every hour they're in the truck. Not just not just the minimum wage for the 14 working hours, you know, at, when you're on duty, but all the hours when you're in the sleeper. When you're doing pre-trip, any of that stuff, let's pull over here and let's actually get a break. Whoa! Slamming on the brakes there. Actually, want to take a 30-minute here, or should take it here. Actually, a pretty nice uh, rest area set up. Yeah, but a, a, a judge ruled 15, or not $15 an hour, but minimum wage. Now, that's different from state to state, obviously. But it's still still a big win. I, I, I really think, though, it's going to cut back then on other wages. They'll cut back the per mile pay. So when we get back on the road, we'll, I'll kind of talk what I think about that. So see you then. All right, let's hit the road. Got a 45 minute break in, stretch the legs. I always hate coming out of these kind of places because the cars and trucks just fly down this uh, little road here. Got a bus over there. So yeah, a judge uh, ruled that companies should pay minimum wage not only for time even spent in the sleeper, for but for any time, or not only for just on duty time, which would be nice to have that minimum wage where you know, and some companies already do this, where you get a guaranteed pay for every day. You're gonna make $150 a day or whatever it is, uh, because, you know, that's basically minimum wage. And you're getting, and that's what the judge kind of ruled is you know, initially there was one part of the ruling was, okay, they should be getting paid minimum wage for while they're working. So if you're getting paid, let's say $10 an hour, um, you're getting hundred for you're guaranteed $140 a day, right? Or somewhere around there. Well, the judge also ruled that 
not only should companies be paying their workers when they're working or on duty, but they should also be paying their workers for when they're in the truck or when they're on the road. Whenever they're not home with their families or not at home, right? And it makes sense because you're, you're not you're not home. You're not able to be with your family. You're also now some will say, well, that's just part of the, the job, right? And it is, but you're also you're also still responsible for the truck and the load and the trailer and everything else, even while you're sleeping, even while you're on a you're on your ten hour or you're on your half hour or whatever it is. You're still responsible for that truck and responsible for everything. You still have to do the pre-trip. You're not making any money when you're doing the pre-trip. You're not making any money, despite the fact that you have to be responsible for that, the truck and the load and the trailer for your 10. So you're off duty, you're sleeping, but you're still responsible. Whereas any other job, most other jobs, especially jobs where you're getting paid by the hour, you know, or jobs that are a little bit lower uh, you know, not a creative or whatever, you know, whatever kind of job. I can't even think of what you'd call them. Uh, I gotta go this way. Gotta go west, 20. But those jobs, most jobs, you're going home, you're clocking out 5 o'clock, 4 o'clock, whatever time you clock out, and you're done. You go home, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about... A little faster on that corner. You don't have to worry about um, being responsible for things at work, you know, company stuff, while you're at home, off off the clock, not getting paid. In most cases, there are things where you are responsible for presentations, or you have you have you take home certain you know pieces of work or whatever, but. For the most part, you're not responsible for, you know, let's say if you're working at McDonald's or something, you're not responsible for making sure that ice cream machine is in working condition while you're not on the clock. That's the boss's deal. That's the, you know, that's the owner. They have to worry about all that stuff. That's why owners usually take a little bit of a cut, right? Because they have to be responsible for that. Well, in trucking, drivers have to be responsible for that all the time while they're in their truck. But they're not getting paid for that 24 hours. They're getting paid for when the truck wheels are rolling. And the judge ruled that, hey, company drivers should get paid for all that time, minimum wage. So that that's a big win. I also think, though, that it's just going to end up being that they'll pay the minimum wage, but they're just going to lower those uh, mileage rates again. So that you're still ending up with about the same pay anyway. Though mileage rates are creeping up as companies are trying to keep good drivers. Probably should have yielded there. Here in Tuscaloosa. Tuscaloosa looks a little bit like, I think, Gallup, New Mexico. That's coast to coast for you. It's a little bit of a copy and paste when it comes to the cities. And I saw one of those discussion threads opened again on the Steam, in the Steam discussions. You know, why doesn't SES just use coast to coast? You know, just improve a little bit of coast to coast and then really should have shifted to a better gear there but you shouldn't shift when you're on the railroad tracks either but why doesn't why, why don't they use a uh, coast to coast as a base they'll save them so much time I saw that thread again and just the uh, I think I talked about another video but every time I see it it just it gets me because they'd have to the quality down here I mean in this area in the deep south it's pretty nice 
this is still not what it's going to look like if SC, when SES hopefully gets out here. And they're going to they're going to make it look a lot better. There's going to be a lot more assets specific to this area. And honestly, you know, how much time are they going to save by you know, just going off of this map? You know, maybe a day because they don't have to map all the, you know, all the interstates. But that's not even the hardest part. The hardest part is putting all the signs and creating the assets. Frankly, it's not the really the mapping of the roads themselves. All right, we are here and we get to do a nice pull through. Parking brake in place. All right, 262 miles, six hours and five minutes. That's that brake in there. And we made $735, not bad. Let's check out what we got at the current company. Some dynamite, some paint, and some nitrocellulose. Two of those go to New Mexico. We got another one that we can take over to Colombia. I'm gonna take this uh, nitrocellulose over to Colombia. I think. Let's just make sure we can do this. Yeah, we should be able to. Yeah, if we start, we start now, we'll be fine. We're only gonna be able to drive another two, two hours, 45 minutes. We're at nine hour, or one hour, 45 minutes. We're at nine hours, 15 minutes driving already for today. Well, technically not for today, but on this 14. And I'm just gonna stick with that. I, I don't think you can do more within the 14. I think you can only do 11 within a 14 hour period. So let's take this nitrocellulose. Uh, got a little bit of a short trailer. We can do a double. All right, well, I switched that. You saw I just switched that to uh, the double, and that actually gets us more money per mile because we're actually shipping more nitrocellulose. Let's do that. That's Tuscaloosa to Columbia. It's still, still seven hours, 30 minutes, seven hours and 30 minutes, but paying a little bit more, it's actually gonna be an articulated trailer. That's what it says. Well, let's take that job. Trailer is ready. Actually, it looks like it's two short trailers. Well, I thought it was going to be two long doubles, but two short ones. Um, let's pull forward. Where is this trailer parked? That looks cool. We got a double. I can't remember if I've ever done doubles before. I know we wanted to do Walmart double 
a while back and it disappeared. So now we get to do a hazardous double. We're heading now to Columbia, South Carolina. We have, what did I say? We have an hour, 45 minutes to drive. So that will be, what time will that be? That will be, do the math, do the math. About 12, 12 p.m. So we got until noon. I think we can make it to that rest area we were at. Oh no, actually that won't be on the path or on the, on the same route. We get to the here we got to be careful we got to check because we do have a doubles we do have doubles as well so our trailer I think if we get stuck at that stop sign will be hanging over shift into a good gear again I also think with hazards you have to come to actually do a complete stop at train tracks Alright, I looked at the map a few times. I think I'm gonna wuss out here. And we're just gonna end the night uh, here in Tuscaloosa. Because I think the next one is just gonna be, it's gonna be way further than an hour, I think. I just don't think we're gonna make the, the next rest area. So, but we'll, we'll be able to finish this uh, uh, job next episode. I do like how we get the, the progress for the truck stop tour. Because this truck stop was pulled from New Mexico. All right, well, we're gonna stop here for the night or for the day and probably get going again before midnight. Maybe I'll just take a longer 10, you know, longer than a 10 hour and get to about maybe one or two in the morning. So until then, I'm Martin Wenzel. Uh, I'll probably, you know, probably just take a longer break and go until uh, maybe one in the morning, maybe midnight, get to midnight. All right, let's look at the log. Uh, started the day, started this day. We were actually on the road already. Started at, at midnight. Uh, did our drop, that's 15 minutes. Put on there for the drop. Uh, drove another three hours, 15 minutes. Then another, took our break. Then another two hours, 15 minutes. It was actually two hours, 15 minutes, not three hours, 15 minutes. So I did the math wrong. I have to, for, I forget I have to take that one hour. It's only 9.15 when we got that drop off at uh, Chevron and then we drove another hour to get here so we only actually did eight and a half or it would have been nine hours 15 minutes from the start of our 14 hour when we started but only eight and a half hours driving today actually could have probably made that next rest stop but that's okay math error math error was in our favor actually slightly we didn't go over and mess up violating any rules and that's going to give us a duty time on this day of 8 hours and 45 minutes. So until next time, and we'll see if it's tomorrow or if it's really late tonight. Um, but until then, I'm Martin Wenzel. This is American Truck Simulator. Take care. Check your pins. Happy trucking. Goodbye.